Tonight. The last time I seen her was Thursday night around 6 o'clock. An investigation is underway after a woman was found dead in her Wainwright home on Friday. Plus, Amigos assault. A man is recovering in hospital following an incident at the Lloydminster nightclub. And... They're just not being taken care of. It's pretty frustrating. you got to dodge them all the time. And they're getting deeper. Drivers are preparing for pothole season. What the city is doing to curb the frustrations. This is New Cap News with Nicole Stilger. Good evening and thanks for joining us. Our CMP Major Crimes Unit is investigating a sudden death in Wainwright, one that police say is considered suspicious. 31-year-old Nicole Clifford was found dead in her home, Wayne, in her Wainwright home rather, on Friday. Our CMP were called to the home to perform a welfare check when they found her. Neighbors say she was a mother of two young kids and recently divorced. Keisha Ball lives two houses down from Clifford and saw her Thursday night. The last time I seen her was Thursday night around six o'clock. I took her for I took my dogs for a walk and she ended up just kind of being outside with her dogs and she seemed kind of agitated. Investigators have not said how Nicole died. No arrests have been made. Anyone with information is asked to call police or crime stoppers. And a man has been charged with 17 offenses following a police standoff in the Satellite Cree Nation last night when police received a call about a man who was possibly armed and barricaded in a residence. Traffic was rerouted on Highway 36 near St. Brides as a precaution. A woman and a man known to each other were both in the home. The woman came out of the residence at around 11 p.m. unharmed. This morning, 31-year-old Stacy Kyle Cardinal was arrested without incident and remains in custody. Some of the charges include forcible confinement, pointing a firearm and uttering threats. Two firearms and ammunition were seized at the residence. And a 31-year-old man from Wasika is dead after his pickup truck collided with a semi on Highway 16 at around 11 p.m. yesterday. The driver of the semi was transported to hospital with undetermined injuries and has since been released. The highway is now fully open at Wasika. The investigation is ongoing. A man is in hospital following an incident outside a Lloydminster nightclub this weekend. Police say they responded to a report of a man bleeding outside of Amigos in the early morning hours on Saturday, where he was transported to hospital by EMS. His condition was such that he was further transferred to Saskatoon by Stars Air Ambulance, where he remains. If you have any information about this incident, call the Lloydminster RCMP or Crime Stoppers. And City Council met for the fourth time in 2017 with a heavy agenda to round out February. Everything from storm water to potable water and tobacco was in front of Council this afternoon. Adam McVicker with more. Well, a long meeting this afternoon at City Hall for City Council. Plenty on the agenda to talk about, starting with the tobacco reduction grant policy. What this policy would do is collect retailer fees for retailers that sell tobacco and flavored tobacco and reinvest 100% of those fees into community groups to support active and healthier lifestyles through a grant. Now, the policy, which has been recognized by Alberta Health Services and multiple cities across Canada, passed in City Council, but the bylaw in which the city uses to collect those fees was brought up into question. Some city councillors feel the bylaw puts a burden on small business retailers that sell tobacco in the city, so it's expected that will be in front of city council in one way or another very soon. The Alberta Central East Corporation water supply agreement was also in front of council this afternoon. That would make Lloydminster a hub for the region's potable water supply, not a problem for the city's capacity according to administration. Now, Council did approve this agreement, but there's no word yet on when construction is expected to begin. Administration is expecting a line will be in the ground in Lloyd Minster sometime in spring of 2018. The storm water utility fee, also in front of Council this afternoon, it passed first reading. What this would be is an additional charge on residents' water bills to help support Lloyd Minster's storm water system. 33% of, of the storm water system is 38 years old and has has never been upgraded before and a study and master plan show that $53 million in capital upgrades is needed for Lloydminster's stormwater system so this utility would act as a funding operation for the operations and this upgrade as well. There is also an open house for this stormwater utility Thursday night at City Hall from 5.30 until 7.30 so the city can get residents' perspective on this situation. Well, we'll have all of this and more on New Cap News throughout the week. Back to you. 
And like the recent temperatures in the border city, frustrations are on the rise. The warmer weather not only means spring is on the way, but pothole season as well. Angie Mellon has more on the city's plans to address these driving hazards as they come up. Potholes, they're inevitable. However, they're not always easily spotted and they can cause serious damage to vehicles. But the city can only implement temporary solutions. As we know about them or find them, uh, we have a temporary fixed product that, uh, that we've been putting in them at this time of year. Um, once it warms up, we do have a machine where we can go and permanently fix them. Drivers are raising concern, but are also understanding that potholes can't be prevented. They're just not being taken care of. It's pretty frustrating. You've got to dodge them all the time. and They're getting deeper. And one at a time, not so bad. And then every time you come around, and you've got to be careful with everything going on in your car. Well, I think we have to expect them because uh, spring isn't here yet. And it's pretty hard, I think, for the city to get out and to do much about them yet. So I guess we just have to be a little bit more cautious about where we're driving. They can be a little troublesome when you've got to fix stuff if you hit them pretty hard. But um, I haven't seen a ton yet, but it's not quite spring. If you do notice a pothole, you can report it to the city on their website. There's a process on the, on the uh, website called Report a Concern. Uh, those get checked every day uh, on a day, and uh, if there's concerns, they, they get addressed. Until the weather stabilizes and the potholes can be permanently fixed, the city asks drivers to slow down and to continue to practice safe driving habits. For NewCap News, I'm Angie. The Last Laugh Improv Show by the Lloydminster Comprehensive High School's Drama Department is returning to the Border City. Staged at the Vic Juba Theatre March 12th, the show features some returning talent from the Vancouver Theatre Sports League, as well as a Canadian improv legend. Brian Lentz has the details. If anyone sees me, buy me a copy. That's the one request whose line is it anyway star Colin Mockery has for Lloyd Minster. Mockery adds he looks forward to performing alongside local students. I work with younger generations on a selfish uh, level because I find when I work with young people who I don't know that well, it really sort of keeps me on my toes. LCHS drama teacher Simon Stang says this is a great opportunity for his students to learn from one of the best learn and hone and improve their their skills watching some professionals I guess uh, you can take a lot away from just watching uh, professional improvisers do their stuff. Mockery is an inspiration for many of the students who say they won't let the opportunity to see him in action go to waste. I'm really excited to see him perform and uh, we'll get to talk to him so I'm gonna ask him you know some questions and get some improv tips and I think it'll be really exciting to meet uh, a star, per se. As for what to expect at the last laugh? We never know what's going to happen. That's the beauty of improv. I think that's why we all enjoy it, because uh, it's different every single night, depending on how we're doing, how the audience is, the suggestions we're getting. Brian Lentz, Newcap News. Well, the struggle of dressing to impress is something that many people could relate to. While the Lakeland Business Club is planning their annual event to teach students that it's possible and doesn't have to break the bank. This year's Fashion on a Budget show challenges 10 students from different programs at Lakeland College to shop for an outfit appropriate for a business dinner with only $34.21. What the budget needs to entail is you need to buy your suit, your, your shirt, your jacket, any accessories, and your pants or your skirt, everything after that, your shoes, your socks, your undergarments, your belt, that's provided by you. For the first time, the students will be taking on the runway and answering the judges' questions. The, evening, or the event is in the evening, giving the community a chance to connect with possible future employers or business owners. Or you're finishing up your degree this year, you start that networking, all of a sudden you have a lot more you have your lot, not necessarily hands in your cookie jars, but you have a lot, you have your foot in the door for a lot of places and you make those connections. Students will be judged in categories like most innovative, most confident, and most likely to become CEO. Well, cats and dogs bring joy to many households, but for some people, owning a pet is not within their means. In this week's edition of Retrospect, Gina Martin shows us how an initiative in Vermilion allowed people to enjoy our four legged friends and relieve some stress while doing so.
It's something many pet owners take for granted and people without pets don't understand. The warmth and unconditional love an animal can give to a human being. Staff at the Alice Keith Nursing Home in Vermilion believe that love has healing qualities. Four months ago, they started the pet therapy program where once a month volunteers bring in their animals for the elderly residents to enjoy. The residents just light right up. They get a big smile on their face and, and they really enjoy it. And, it. and it doesn't require a lot of ability. If you're physically impaired or cognitively impaired, you can still benefit from you know, just holding the pet. I have seen the benefits of uh, pets interacting with human beings. And I think that sometimes pets can get through to people uh, that nobody else can reach. Some of the 65 residents enjoyed the companionship of a pet for most of their lives and miss it greatly. They look forward to the third Thursday of every month when they can enjoy another man's best friend and reminisce about their own. A good hunter too, yeah. yeah. You like the, like, the, like the water, you know? Oh, they love the water. Oh, yeah, I used to go there. I was shooting rats and beavers, you know. And he's going to get them for me. Of course, some people, if they're cognitively impaired, they won't remember the next day. But if they have that enjoyment for that five-minute span or 20-minute span, then that's our goal. It's no surprise that even today, people enjoy the therapeutic qualities petting a cat or dog can bring. And it's caught on not only with seniors, but people of all ages. So the youth center usually comes in once a month, and they just spend time with the animals um, and then sometimes we'll have um, you know for example in the summertime big brothers big sisters um, their camps will come or sometimes we'll actually take an animal um, over to the big brothers big sisters and uh, let the kids interact with the animals there. Punch on adds they are always looking for new ways to bring their animals out into the community and if you have an idea feel free to contact the SPCA. That's all for Retrospect this week. I'm Gina Martin.